Hello, welcome to Crafty Noon, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me today in my craft room. We're going to make a creative fun fold. Uh, some of you have a packet for this fun fold, and you received it in the mail from me. Some of you are team members, and you got an email from me with all the pieces and parts you need to put this together along with me. Anyone else is welcome to tune in and join. I hope we creatively inspire you with this month's featured fund fold. If you place an order with me in January, you can get a packet for next month's fund fold. But I am so excited to share this fold with you today because it is really an awesome one. This is called the pop out slider card. So beautiful card on the front, um, you know, looks looks like a regular normal card, right? So when you open up, the card, the inside pops up, pops out. There's a slide piece. So this piece slides and then it pops this up. So it almost looks like a table. Oops, my back piece is coming apart. Please ignore that. When I do my initial samples, I do them with temporary adhesive because I often change my mind. So um, I guess I didn't tack that one down again. Uh, but this is the fold that we're going to make. And this is the one that I'm going to share with you. So we have two different colorways, depending on which packet you got in the mail. You might have gotten the Fresh Fusion version or you might have gotten the Pebble Pink version. They're exactly the same fold. And I'm going to walk you through how to make this cool, cool card. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this party started. Now, the products that we're using here today are um, a free celebration product. Celebration is going on right now. This one is called, I got to look, it's free with a $50 purchase. It's gorgeous designer paper that I don't think really shows off <laughs> in the catalog as beautiful as it is, it, it is in person. It's absolutely stunning. It's called Favored Flowers, and it coordinates with the Fragrant Flowers bundle that's in the mini catalog. And that's how I die cut this out. There's a matching die cut that die cuts right out of the paper, both this flower bouquet and this one. So again, depending on which packet you received, you might have the freesia or you might have the petal pink, both are gorgeous. And then we're also using the, um, the embossing folder. This is one of my favorites. This is the cane weave embossing folder. And uh, it is absolutely stunning. You can actually put it on either way. <laughs> this one I put on uh, the reverse way. This is kind of where I call the normal way where it's raised up. Um, almost like a woven pattern. So totally up to you on that. But we're going to walk through this project. So and then I have a whole bunch of alternate projects that I use to make this same fold. So we're going to gather our supplies. It is an awesome embossing <laughs> folder. I, I can't stop playing with it, you guys. It's kind of crazy. All right. So supplies we need for this project are dimensionals, um, an adhesive to assemble our card. We want a strong adhesive. I'm using tear and tape. And then we need a sentiment for the inside. I am using the Happy Birthday Sentiment from the Shaded Summer Stamp Set and the Tuxedo Black uh, Memento Ink Pad. All right, now I'm gonna be showing you a lot of products today. And if you have a big wish list, you might wanna consider taking advantage of the incredible offer that Stampin' Up! has going on right now um, for joining. As a hobby demonstrator, you can join. Uh, you pay $99 and you get $175 in product of your choice. Or you can pay $129 and include this uh, cute little boho blue mini stamp and emboss machine right in your kit. All right, so we've got our supplies. Oh, bone folder, almost forgot that. Super important. All right, so I'm gonna grab a packet. Um, I'll just grab this one, uh, the petal pink one. It was on top. Um, this card, it's not hard, but there is a definite order and direction that you need to do things to make sure that the all of the sliding part works. I, for now, I'm going to set aside everything except for three pieces, okay? I am going to keep, slide this over, I'm going to keep our card base. I'm going to keep this long piece that's folded in half. And I'm going to keep this other piece. Okay, these are what we're going to start with. And these two pieces are what makes our mechanism work. All right. So Marsha, you get kits if you place an order in my online store. 
Uh, these people that got the kits uh, placed an order in December for uh, $50 before tax and shipping, and then they were mailed a packet. You don't need a host code or anything like that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by taking my bone folder and just creasing these two scores right here. And those of you that have your packet or have your supplies cut, you can do this right along with me. Um, there is a portion of this video where I'm going to ask you to just watch and not do. <laughs> and I'll let you know when that happens. All right. So this piece, um, if you fold it in half on the kind of this, it's not exactly center, but the most center fold, um, it, you have one part that's a little bit longer. That part has a score. And I'm going to fold that uh, forwards and backwards. This one is pretty critical in making every the the movement happen so i like it to be super bendy okay um i'm gonna grab here while i'm doing this i'm actually gonna grab my um my cheater piece so that i make sure i'm telling you appropriately um just uh let's see yeah, this piece here will actually be folding that way, in case you're curious, okay? And then we can go ahead and fold on these other lines. This one is already folded in your packet. If you uh, did your own supplies, you'll need to fold that one. So we have this one goes back. This one goes towards me. These next two uh, go away from me. Those pieces form the flat top that uh, pops up. And then this last one also folds backwards okay so when you fold on everything it looks like this now this uh i got this uh pop-up slider idea from annette elias from the netherlands um she did it a couple years ago i saw it on pinterest i watched her video which was all in dutch <laughs> and uh everything was metric and also with um the european size of cardstock which is different than what we use here in the u.s so I did a lot of adapting, <laughs> which involved a lot of trial and error with typing white paper. And eventually I worked it out with our cardstock. So, um, all right, so we've got our pieces here and we're gonna go ahead and attach our tear and tape. This piece, let me give you the dimensions for this piece. Oh, Jennifer's got it for us right here. Oops, I did the wrong one, Jennifer, sorry. It all of a sudden popped up on me. All right, so this is one and a half by nine and three quarters, and it's scored at three fourths inches, five and a quarter inches, seven inches, seven and a half inches, and nine and a quarter. All right, that's that piece. And now we're going to attach our tear and tape to this piece. And there are certain spots where um, you want to, uh, yeah, I get, I get a gold star for math, right, Jennifer? <laughs> By the way, my moderator, Jennifer Walsh, is here with us today. Thanks for all you do with Jennifer. She is typing the dimensions so that I can share them with you. And um, uh, helping out, if you have a question, you can tag her by doing the at symbol and typing Jan Jennifer. Because while I'm crafting, sometimes I miss your comments and your questions. So um, the card base is your standard four and a quarter by five and a half, I should say, standard in the U.S., uh, so long way folded in half. All right, so we're going to start by attaching our tear and tape to these two pieces. This particular piece, let's see, is right here. This one is two by five and a quarter, and it's scored at half inch and four and three quarters inches. Okay. All right, so we're going to do our tear and tape. All right, so we're going to put a piece of tear and tape at the top. And at the bottom of this piece. Okay, not sure how to rip that, but whatever. All right. Okay, so just at the top and the bottom. Now let's move on to this piece. And I'm gonna have I'll have the sample out here. We're gonna attach four pieces of tear and tape to this piece. Okay, to the bot the the. The bottom here has this tab on the end, and we're going to put two pieces of tear and tape on that. All right, so that looks like that. And then 
this these other folds these narrower panels are going to get also get tear and tape just one piece on these because they are narrower about a half inch I'm gonna put one there and I'm gonna put one here all right so we now have our piece so it should look like this this piece of tear and tape is between those two scores. There's one out here and one back here. All right. And remember, this is going to go backwards. If you folded it the other way, that's okay. Just fold it back. <laughs> All right. So now, those of you that have a packet or supplies, I'm going to ask that you just hang out and watch me make this. And then we'll do it together. Okay. Um, so that uh, you don't inadvertently put it together incorrectly. I think it's better to on this particular one just to watch the order. But if you if you don't want to, that's okay. If you if you're feeling confident and you want to go for it, totally fine. I am going to remove the tear and tape from this uh, top narrow half inch section right there. Okay, and I'm going to adhere that to about the center left edge of this piece it does not have to be exact okay uh susan why should we wear use tear and tape instead of regular adhesive a good question um this slider mechanism is what makes everything work so it gets a workout and if you use regular adhesive on an odd um uh configuration like this it occasionally will pop out off in my history. Um, you could try liquid glue that might hold uh, totally your choice. But um, in my experience, the tear and tape holds the best. So that's why I went with that, um, that particular product. All right, so now I'm going to open up my card base. And I am going to lay this piece in so that the edge of this is butted up with the center score. Okay. I'm going to be removing this tear and tape and it is going to be adhering to over here. And that is going to make the piece slide and pull when it opens. You see that? Okay. So, but first we're going to go ahead and stick down our overlay. So I'm going to be removing my tear and tape, tucking this down and adhering it down. When I watched her video, she went ahead and stuck this piece down. Uh, but I quickly realized that if you didn't have it lined up correctly, this could be sticking out the end. I did make this a little shorter just to give you a little fudge factor. Um, so this is what worked best for me. So I'm lining it up so that my score here is lined up with the top edge and my score here is lined up with the bottom edge. Okay, so I'm going to pull off that tear and tape and I'm going to hold this down. I'm just going to lift this flap up, tuck it under and stick it down. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. This is an overlay piece and I only want it adhered at the bottom because it is allowing that piece underneath. It's giving it room to slide without catching on anything. So it's a pretty important piece. So I flipped that under and stuck that down. Okay. My next step is to remove these two pieces of adhesive. And this is really easy to adhere. I'll show you why. So I've got those two uh, removed. It's butted up right to the edge. And I just close my card and press. And then when I open, I now have that mechanism. Okay, so I'm going to do this one more time. Those of you that have your packets, um, this is the time that you can do it right along with me. Um, if you already did it, that's cool. That's fine. Um, you're all set then, right? So you already have your tear and tape on, correct? And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with this piece here. Make sure this one folds back. This is not the wider one with two on it. It's the narrower one with one. That is, could you use an ATG gun runner? I am not familiar with that product, so I do not know. Uh, maybe one of our viewers can answer that for you, Donna, or Deb, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if that tape would be strong enough. 
Um, if you have the red line adhesive, uh, that it's, uh, it's got the red tape adhesive, that would be strong enough. Um, all right, so I have this folded. I have this uh, <laughs> sticky removed. And I'm going to take this piece, which I call the, what do I call this? This is the overlay piece. And again, I'm going to adhere it about in the center. Okay. So those of you watching along, go ahead and adhere that about in the center to the left edge. So it's centering it this way, but, but lined up with that left edge. Okay. Then I'm going to open up my card base. I'm going to lay this inside. And I'm lining up this score line with the top of my card and this score line with the bottom of my card. I'm going to remove the backing for this adhesive. And I'll just go ahead and remove this one as well while I'm at it. And then I'm going to hold it down. I want to make sure this is budding up with that center score line and somewhat straight and that these uh, score lines are lined up with the top and bottom edge of my card. I'm just going to pull this back, fold that flap under that's sticky now, and adhere it down to the top edge. Fold this under, and adhere it to the bottom edge. Okay, so now I have this overlay piece that is loose in the center that's going to allow this piece to slide back and forth. Don't worry if yours popped out like that. It looks like it's not lined up. It's just that this is wanting to spring forward, which is a good thing. Flatten it back out, and it should be lined up right with that center score line. Now we're just going to remove, I almost had the wrong end there, remove the backings for these two pieces of tear and tape. And I am going to fold the card closed and press. And now I have this mechanism that slides. All right. Anne says ATG should be strong enough, but you could add green glue to make sure. And I think what she means by green glue is the uh, multi-purpose liquid glue um, to kind of double double down on that. All right. So there we have our sliding mechanism. How cool is that? Uh, what is the middle of the screen that looks like a G? So Bonnie, I don't. It's something to do with my. Um, my uh, web camera it all of a sudden is showing a symbol um, i was having trouble with it earlier in the week i had to remove the app and re-download it and it's giving me this weird signal now so i'm so sorry about that all right so and i can't make it go away <laughs> so we're just trying to deal with it here today all right so let's go ahead and finish our card now um i better get on it i got two to finish here Woo! all right so we have let's go ahead and finish the no, we're going to go on to the front first. All right, so I'm going to grab these two pieces. Um, I've got a piece of petal pink uh, paper here, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere that to the front of my card. Helps if I take the cap off of my adhesive. Now, your packet might be the Fresh Freesia version, whichever. You're going to put a bigger piece of colored cardstock on the front to just make our the front of our card pretty. So we've got that little pop of petal pink there. And then I have an embossed piece for you. This is the cane weave embossing folder. Now when an uh, embossing folders are, or when cardstock is embossed, it changes texture. And so sometimes it'll tear with adhesive. So I actually like to put my adhesive on the cardstock. I'm coming well in from the edges so that it won't show. And then I'm going to adhere my piece onto here. Now, again, um, you can look at both sides and decide which side you want up. I'm going to go with this side up. And adhere that in place. All right. And we have our pretty bouquet here. So you should have a die cut flower bouquet. And I'm going to put it so that my petal pink one is above and this one is down. It doesn't matter. We can do whatever you want. Um, this is the direction I thought it looked more attractive. I'm throwing things now. And <laughs> I am going to grab the um, some dimensionals here. And let's put that on to our flower. 
There we go. And I'm going to remove the backing pieces here. Again, this flower was die cut from the Favored Flowers Designer Series paper, which is a free celebration choice on January and February. And it was die cut with the uh, Fragrant Flowers Bundle. So we got like a little bit of white on here, driving me crazy, sorry. <laughs> um, the dies match that paper, which is awesome. All right, now we're gonna bling this up in just a little bit with some, um, some rhinestones, but let's go into uh, work on our inside of our card first. These are what I call cover strips. They're just decorative, um, but they also uh, serve the purpose of kind of covering up part of this uh, overlay piece. Because they are cover strips, uh, and because I don't want my overlay smushed down in any way, because uh, that will affect how easily it slides, I'm only going to be putting it, uh, adhesive at the end. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and adhere the little piece of Favored Flower Designer Series paper onto this cover strip. The cover strip is one inch by five and a quarter. And there are two of them. Okay. And right here. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to take our tear and tape and we're going to put a piece of tear and tape at each end. Again, we don't want any adhesive in the middle because these are going to go over that overlay piece and we don't want to squish down anything that helps our slider piece. All right. Peel off the tear and tape. Um, this one you definitely could use a GT or whatever, uh, uh, but I would use a, a strong adhesive because as you could see on my, if you saw at the beginning, my original one uh, popped right off. I just had temporary tape on it, but still, uh, because it's only adhered on each end, it can pop off. Um, now for adhering this on some of my alternate samples, I did it right to the edge. Some of them I left some space. It is entirely up to you. You know what, on this one, I'm gonna put it flush with the bottom and in a little bit from each edge, like so, all right? It's decorative um, and uh, helps kind of cover up that, that mechanism. This doesn't have anything to do with the sliding part of the card. Um, it just helps kind of cover up that main piece and it adds some prettiness to the inside of our card, right? All right, and we're gonna uh, line that up. I felt lined up at the top on this one. Okay, so I did those lined up to the top. Let me show you on this one. I didn't, this one I pulled them down just a little bit. Again, it does not matter, okay? So let's move on to our, got two more, uh, some more bits to stick on here. So these are from the Something Fancy Bundle. I wanted birthday cards. I am in need of birthday cards right now. So I am using the uh, Shaded Summer Stamp Set, this Happy Birthday, and the Memento Basic Black Pad. Um, I have totally cheated and stamped this ahead of time because <laughs> I've had issues trying to stamp things on my videos before. So we're just not gonna go there. So you're gonna want to adhere that on there. You're going to want to stamp it right in the middle or a little bit lower because we are going to be attaching another die cut flower, one of the other um, flowers from the Favored Flowers uh, Designer Series paper matches those fragrant flower. Um, wait, did I mix those up? No, the fragrant flower uh, dies. And so I'm just going to attach this. Um, I'm going to put just a little adhesive on the edge of it, or you could use glue dots if you prefer. I don't think I had those on the supply list, so I'm just gonna use uh, adhesive. I am not gonna use dimensionals inside my card because I want the inside of my card to lay flat, okay? And I wanna make sure that my leaves are not gonna poke up and show when my card is closed, right? I think I'm okay. Uh, I can change it just a little bit, but I think I'm fine. Um, you can always slide it down uh, where you mount it here. It doesn't really matter, so. All right, so this is to mount our label. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel off my tear and tape. 
And it's like kind of putting the tabletop. This is this is the legs of my table, if you will, and this is the top of my table. Put that on right there and just gently press with my fingers. And then that closes down. Now, if your leaves are sticking out of the edge, mine is really close, you guys. Really, really close. If it is, you can just kind of adjust your flower a little bit so that it doesn't poke out uh, and doesn't show. Okay. So that's that inside part. And then I just made a panel here as a place that you could um, write your name, write a little note, a little sentiment, and that just, uh, those two just get adhered together. And then it popped right inside the cup. Okay, there we go. Now, the last little thing that we're going to um, is the last thing we're going to do is add our gems. So, right here we have our gems. And so, in your packet, you have a little folded post it note. Hope you didn't throw it away because inside we have three large iridescent rhinestones. And those are going to just decorate our project here. Kind of a final touch on our card. Put one down here. Uh, you could also use one big, one small, one medium if you prefer. Um, I did it this way because I had a lot to cut apart and it was easier to come apart if I did all the same size. So that was my reasoning, in case you're curious. And there we have our card. Let's bring in that Fresh Breezer version. I won't finish this other one up on, on our live, but I have some alternate versions to show you on our pop out slider card. Okay, so let me grab the alternates here and we will take a look. Who's ready? I'm ready. Woohoo! All right, so I did the same card, but this one I used the Adorable Owls and did a St. Patrick's Day card with my adorable owl here. And when I open up the card, I've got a little leprechaun uh, owl inside and sending luck and love. So it is the same card that we just did. I just orientated it uh, uh, vertical instead of landscape. So we have our cute little owl. The whole card is parakeet party and a little bit of granny apple green. So super fun little card. I haven't lost anything today. I even have tea in my cup. I'm all ready to take a sip if need be. All right. Our next one here is with this super cute bundle. Now, I do have to tell you this bundle is, um, if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, the February Paper Pumpkin Kit is going to go along with this Playing in the Rain um, bundle. Um, it kind of is the same style. Um, this rain and shine paper is so cool. Can you see the shininess of that paper? And then the dies that are in the, um, what am I, why do I keep uh, blanking out on the, the playing in the rain bundle, um, the dies cut out um, the image, uh, some of the images. And so on the front of our card, we've got, oh, happy day here, playing in the rain. And then on our inside of our card, we have this cute, sweet little turtle that just pops right out, to, just coming right at you to greet you. Um, and it's up on this. So this one, I did a much bigger piece. On, you can see the mechanism is the same behind there, but just a much bigger piece coming out at us. And then wishing you the happiest of birthdays. I did a really pretty big focus on birthdays on a lot of these cards. Uh, and a couple holidays. Um, okay, so we've got a couple really cute ones here. We've got a really elegant one here. Uh, this next one is more along the elegant line. I like both cute and elegant, so I go back and forth. This one um, is uh, was inspired by one of our videos that I one of the videos I did this week uh, was on Tuesday, wasn't it, guys? This accordion fun fold card. And I just really liked the colors that we chose. So I decided to do our pop-up slider with these same products. This is the Regency Park paper and the Sentimental Park bundle. These dies from the Sentimental Park are just super cool. I just love them. Um, so this is the front of the card. And then on the inside, 
you've got that label popping up. These labels are made to layer together. So this is actually a white on white. I know you can't really see it super well on camera, um, but uh, you could also do this uh, navy here and do a white embossing. Um, but just a little fun, uh, what a fun birthday card to get in the mail, right, from the Sentimental Park. So uh, super, super cute. And then the last one, oh my gosh, you guys, this one's my favorite, I think. <laughs> um, so this one is with this adorable, it's so cute, isn't it so cute? This is the Share a Milkshake, Share a Milkshake Bundle. And then I paired it with the um, Country Gingham paper. And again, I've got that uh, Cane Wave embossing folder because I totally love it. Um, it's so cute. This, uh, this particular die has the slit in it so that you can add the straw or two straws or whatever. It's just absolutely adorable. And then I had a lot of fun on the inside with this one. So when you open up the inside, you've got the little um, ice cream. Uh, scoop. I love, you guys, I had to buy this bundle because of the spoon. I absolutely fell in love with the spoon. I couldn't even tack it down because it's so stinking cute, right? There's a little die that makes a spoon. And again, this ice cream has the the little bit of, uh, uh, has, it cuts the slit so that you can put the spoon into the ice cream. How clever is that? And so I used it for the straw on the front and I used it for the ice cream on the inside. Now this one is a Valentine card, but you actually could, I've got an, I'll be showing in the tutorial, um, you can make this uh, a birthday, right? You're the cherry on top. And instead of be my Valentine, Valentine, it would say celebrate inside. And you could say um, over here on the, let me line those up perfectly so you can't see the other one. Uh, you can, you know, write your happy birthday message over here. But this share a milkshake bundle is just adorable, you guys, because it is, um, it does have a Valentine thing in it, but it could be used for anything. Great for anniversaries too. Um, that would be super fun. Um, really any celebration uh, would be perfect. So um, even for a, a graduate. So lots of fun options with that one. So really love this one, um, but I love them all. <laughs> I love them all. I love the colors of this one. Um, we've got our playing in the rain here. We've got our St. Patrick's Day. And then of course we have our, our beautiful make and take project. So those are our crafter noon uh, pop and pop out slider cards for the month of January. So once again, um, you got a packet from me if you placed a qualifying order in December. If you're a team member, you got an email with all of the dimensions for our project today. So the recipient of this card can of course stand it um, just like that or they can pop it out to display it on their work surface like so. Um, and then the tall one uh, would just be shown closed, right? Um, or they could set it on their work surface and uh, have it just be uh, like that. So that is how these stand up. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun fold and I hope you enjoyed it. Those of you that have your packets, I hope you have fun with that. And uh, those of you who don't, we'd love to have you craft with us next month for Craft Your Noon. Again, keep an eye out for that tutorial bundle. Cheers, everyone. Happy Craft Your Noon and happy crafting. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye. We'll see you next time.